we're so close to meeting Kang. Some think it's weird that the next villain is being introduced in Ant-Man, but here's why I think Kang is the perfect villain for this movie. And it all starts with Scott's personal story. We haven't started shooting or anything, so this is kind of the first experience I had even surrounded by it, and it's, it, it's my son, Michael Douglas. He said it is, for the first time, you really do feel like it is a family, like this, this kind of... Heroes get involved in each other's adventures, or misadventures, all the time. And there is no end of the world and in crisis to stop. Each hero has their own personal journey as a character. For instance, if you zoom out and look at Tony's character journey, it was a redemption arc. Uh, you know, this great, in hindsight, I get to take credit for everything, right? Oh, there's no Marvel Cinematic Universe without me. Yeah, I did everything. Uh, yeah, it's like you're like... You're indoctrinating people into a cult. He's, yeah. he's the one that said it, though. He made this up. He used to be a billionaire dude bro that made technology used to kill people. By the time he met his end, Tony was a savior and the opposite of his former self. For Scott, the thing he's always chasing is Cassie, his daughter. Getting locked up early in Cassie's life meant he missed out on her early childhood, and the divorce and custody issues have made things worse for him. But just as he was managing to build a relationship with Cassie, whoops, he's stuck in the quantum realm. He disappeared from Cassie's life for five years, which might have been the worst five years of her life. By the time Scott finishes saving half the universe, Cassie's already a teenager. We don't know yet what kind of relationship the two will have by the time Quantum Mania kicks off, but I can't imagine it won't be strained. I'm sure Scott will confide in hope that he wishes he'd gotten more time to actually see Cassie grow up. With the Time Stone now destroyed, who's the one person in the entire world who'd be able to help Scott with that? Entering from stage right, Kang. Uh, two a day sometimes, three a day sometimes, you know. Um, I look I look at the, I think we gotta stay, I mean, talk, let's just talk about the folks. I think we gotta stay healthy, you know. Um, His whole shtick is time travel. Kang was created through the events of the Loki show. There, Loki and his lady variant Sylvie finally came face to face with the boss of the Time Variance Authority, he who remains. As he explained to the Lokis, there was once a war between Kangs from different timelines, which in the MCU means different universes. He who remains is the one who managed to create the TVA. The goal was to prune all timelines besides the sacred timeline, that being the one that created him. Through diligent pruning of the time timelines, he was able to make sure no pretender kings would emerge to try and kill him. But Sylvie took the opportunity to kill him, leading to a mass branching of the timeline. I guess it's safe to say that this Kang was created through one of the new timelines. There's definitely more we need to learn about Kang's backstory. But in the comics, Kang is actually technically from the future. In an effort to impose his rule over the planet, Kang traveled across the timeline and between universes to end up in ancient Egypt in our universe. He began his dominance over our people, but because the Pharaoh Raman Tut. I know, we, we know so far. We're meeting another version tonight. We'll see where it goes. And, you know, it's just been amazing to watch Jonathan bring these characters, you know, plural, to life. And I always say he's a bit like a Swiss Army knife, right, as, as a performer. And we've seen a few of the blades come out and uh, uh, stay tuned, I, I would say, moving forward. That might be what he's trying to do in Quantumania. We know that the Quantum Realm is the key to time travel in the MCU, but he's gonna need Scott. Uh, for, a, for a while. What do you mean you didn't have a bed? I just didn't have a bed. I had a I, bed. Yeah, I didn't even have a... <laughs> I started crashing at a friend's house because I didn't... I couldn't afford rent. I laid down a bunch of towels. I slept on about five towels mm -hmm. for a while. And then we've seen in trailers for the movie that Kang offers Scott a deal. Kang can offer Scott time that he'd lost with Cassie. You're an interesting man. Scott Lang. Um, I don't know who you are, but you've made a big mistake. Okay? I'm an Avenger. And I'm guessing this means he'd let Scott travel back in time and undo the mistakes that cost him so much time with his daughter. But in return, he wants something. And if King's goal is conquering the world through time travel, Scott really is his best bet. I mean, I guess Tony would have been better, but he ain't around anymore. Scott is the one who came up with the time heist that opened this can of worms in the first place. He's associated with Hank Pym, whose technology allows travel through the quantum realm. Superhero, comic book, uh, movie. Um, it's the it's the coolest thing. I'm so excited when they 
Ask me, um, I've never done anything like this. Uh, I've never done a special effects movie uh, either. And he has a supply of pin particles, the fuel that power their time travel. This sure sounds like the makings of a fruitful partnership, but Janet Van Dyne knows something Scott doesn't. Again, we can tell from the trailers that Jan is going to be opposed to Scott making deals with Kang. And Kang is the villain after all. So I'm sure Scott will learn the hard way that you don't trust guys with massive scars on their faces. Speaking of what Scott is going to learn the hard way, Kang is a great villain for him to fight too. After all, Kang will easily be the most dangerous threat Scott has faced. Now, I know what you're thinking. What about Thanos? And in a way, I think the fan base is going to be debating the relative power levels of Thanos and Kang for years to come. But Scott's matchups with Kang and Thanos are going to be quite different. Sure, he was key to reversing Thanos' snap success. He did also punch an alien spaceship out of the sky. In terms of actually fighting Thanos, though, he was under house arrest for most of Infinity War, and in the hour-long climactic battle of Endgame, he never actually engaged with Thanos. Kang, though, is going to be someone Scott actually has to fight. His family will be with him, but Scott would want to keep them safe from this baddie. We've seen glimpses of the fight Lang and Kang will have, and it looks brutal. Reportedly, they had to tone it down in post. This is something fans noticed as well. Between two trailers featuring the same shot of Scott's face, one was bloodier than the other. Scott might not even win. He says in the trailer that all he really needs to do is ensure they both lose. The stakes are so much higher than literally anyone Scott has ever faced. And I will remind you that in Civil War, he fought Avengers. But wait, I have one more reason why Kang is a good villain for Scott. It's because the Ant-Man series matters a lot to the multiverse saga. From helping Steve Rogers in Civil War to concocting the Endgame time heist, Scott Lang has been a really important figure in the MCU. And that's not even all. Hank Pym is the one who discovered and re researched the quantum realm, and he invented the Pym Particles. Meanwhile, Janet Van Dyne has spent a lot of time in the quantum realm herself. Now that we're seeing the importance of all those things, one thing has become clear. The Ant-Man movies were not to be underestimated. We didn't realize it at the time, but it was the Ant-Man movies that actually set up the multiverse saga. They were doing it quite subtly, while we were all more invested in the breakup of the Avengers. And of course, the stuff with Thanos and the Infinity Stones. In a way, all this build up to the multiverse is being paid off in the third Ant-Man movie, and really, there's no better place to pay it off. That Kevin Feige really knows what he's doing, I tell you. Comic-Con for me is, is an amazing tradition that is always nerve-wracking and uh, stress-inducing, and in this case, also extremely emotional. It's been three years since we have been here. And speaking of Feige, here's why he thinks Kang is the perfect villain for Scott. At a press conference, Feige addressed the decision to start Phase 5 of the MCU with Quantumania. He also talked about why Kang is being introduced for the first time in this movie out of all of them. While Phase 4 introduced a whole lot of new characters to the franchise, Kang deserved to be introduced against an MCU stalwart. Who better than the one with the most to lose? Scott's family means he has the most at stake, but that's all I have on why King the Conqueror makes the perfect Ant-Man villain. See you next time with even more amazing content.